Greetings my friends. My name is Dr. Hillel Mazansky. I'm coming to you today from San Diego, California. My website is drdrmedicalhypnosis.com Please visit the blogs because there is a tremendous amount of health information there, evidence-based and oftentimes uh, one's physicians for whatever reason don't tell you about these health about the health information. My speciality encompasses medical hypnosis and hypnotherapy, guided imagery or visualization, nutrition and exercise. Today's health tip is entitled a tale, T-A-L-E, period, control surgical blood loss using hypnosis and hypnotherapy. Now you might ask yourself, how is it possible that one can use hypnosis to control blood loss during major surgery? You're in disbelief and I was in disbelief until it happened to me. The tale begins. In 1985, I suffered metastatic testicular cancer, exactly the same type of cancer as Lance uh, Armstrong had except my brain was spared. Before I went for the surgery, my hypnotherapist and guided imagery specialist said to me that we are going to control your blood loss because I had a 12-hour procedure that I had to undergo. It was called a major abdominal surgery. It was called a nephrectomy, removal of my left kidney and radical adenoidectomy, removing every single uh, gland that was affected uh, in my body, uh, in the abdomen mainly. This operation uh, occurred after six weeks of the most intensive, horrendous chemotherapy with tremendous nausea and vomiting. Well, my hypnotherapist controlled that beautifully and I listened to the uh, hypnosis video those days on a tape today it's all on video but in 1985 we never had video we didn't have anything except uh, tapes so by listening to her guiding me and hypnotizing me while I underwent the chemotherapy what was before a severe vomiting and retching and intense nausea often leading to uh, dehydration all I had was a very slight nausea during the chemotherapy, so I was convinced that this worked. Back to the story, when she said uh, she can control my blood loss using hypnosis and hypnotherapy, I was in total disbelief. But she explained to me, because I said to her, how can hypnosis work while I'm under anesthetic, anesthetized, general anesthesia. She said to me and explained that the subconscious mind is far greater than the conscious mind and therefore although I'll be under anesthesia I will still be able to control my own blood loss. She explained to me how to send out special healing materials that uh, immediately as the surgeon would cut an artery or a vein, the healing material would stop the hemorrhage. And that is where guided imagery or guided visualization comes into play while under hypnosis. Having had a positive effect with uh, the nausea and vomiting, I was prepared to go along with it. So for a week before uh, the surgery was scheduled, uh, I started listening to the tapes twice a day so that I could practice before the eventual surgery. Having gone uh, to Indiana University in the United States, there was an extremely famous uh, surgeon by the name of Dr. Johnson who only uh, performed testicular cancer surgery. He did nothing else, only that. And when I met him, he told me he'd done it for 25 years. So he explained to me that it would be a 10 to 12 hour surgical procedure, which I didn't 
expect at all. Now here's the point, the important point. He said I would use between 10 and 12 pints or units of blood. That frightened me no end because this was prior to the days of HIV testing. But I had no choice. I had to take the surgery. After three days after the surgery, once I recuperated mentally because I was under heavy sedation in the surgical ICU unit, the doctor came to me and with his whole entourage of uh, consultants and residents and he explained to me the surgery went extremely well. But never in 25 years did he see what he saw in my case. I said, what was it? He said, you only used three units of blood. I was amazed. But knowing fully well that he would not believe me that I did hypnosis and guided imagery to prevent the blood loss, I just thanked him profusely for saving my life. And that is the tale. So back to me in my office, three times now, on patients who needed major abdominal surgery for cancer or whatever, I not only hypnotized them for their cancer, but I also hypnotized them for control of blood loss and did guided imagery on them. Exactly the same the way I was taught and the way I underwent it. And therefore on the website drmedicalhypnosis.com is a... Uh, control your blood loss through hypnosis. Those three patients that I told you about, their doctors were also amazed at the very small amount of blood that had to be infused into the patients. And that is a tale, and it proves to you, my friends, the power of the mind the power of the mind is endless. We don't use but 10% of our human brains, and that's been proven by uh, neuroscientists and uh, psychiatrists, psychologists, etc., that we only use 10% of our brain. I think we use less of a percentage as far as our mind is concerned, because there's a distinction between the brain and the mind. Sure, the mind is located in the brain. So the potential that we have, that our mind has, is endless and we are nowhere near to becoming so uh, empowered in our minds that we can do things that abound and are unheard of today. The mind can control surgical uh, blood loss if the hypnosis and the guided imagery together is used correctly. My name is Dr. Hillel Mazansky and I thank you for listening to this weekly health tip.